we'll start this review off talking about direct and alternating current. Um, we know that when electrons flow through a complete circuit in one direction due to a potential difference uh, in that circuit, that's called direct current. So when it's flowing in one direction only, that's direct current. Uh, some examples would be a flashlight, uh, an MP3 player, anything that uses a battery, basically. Um, when electrons move back and forth consistently changing direction, that's called alternating current. Um, that's usually what you find in a, a wall plug in your house. In North America, the current in household alternates 60 times per second, or 60 hertz. I want to cover a little bit of new material here as well. Um, this is something that we we did not talk about um, explicitly in the course, um, but I did notice that it is sometimes on the final exam there may be one question uh, about this, so I want to make sure that I cover it here. We know that current is defined as the amount of charge that passes through a cross-section of wire or conductor um, divided by the time that it takes to do so. Um, charge is a measure of the number of electrons. Um, so far we've only talked about one coulomb of charge per one second equals one amp of current. Um, but we didn't talk about the fact that one coulomb of charge um, is an actual measurement of number of electrons and it is equal to 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrons. Um, so uh, if, a, if a circuit has one amp uh, of current flowing through it, that means every second 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrons flow through it. If it has two amps, it would be double that, which would be 12.48 times 10 to the 18 electrons, um, which written in proper scientific notation, 12.48 uh, times 10 to the 18 would be the same as uh, 1.248 times 10 to the 19 electrons. All right, so um, if one coulomb of charge is 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrons, that means that one electron has one divided by 6.24 times 10 to the 18 coulombs of charge. Or when you actually work this on a calculator, you get 1.602 times 10 to the 19 coulombs. So every electron carries that much charge, which times 10 to the negative 19 is a very small amount of charge. So if we look at a, an example here, if a 5 amp current runs for 12 seconds, how many elementary charges pass through the circuit? This is the type of question that you might find on the final exam. Um, well, 5 amps is 5 coulombs of charge per second. That means that uh, for this instance, 12, for 12 seconds, uh, 5 times 12, 60 coulombs of charge flow through the circuit in that 12 seconds. One coulomb of charge is that many elementary charges or electrons. Um, those are, can be used interchangeably in this circumstance. Uh, so if one coulomb charge is that many and we have 60 coulombs, then 60 times 6.24 times 10 to the 18 equals 3.744 times 10 to the 20 electrons. Um, flow through this circuit in the 12 seconds. All right, and on to Kirchhoff's laws. All right, uh, looking at uh, this first circuit that we have here, we see we have 24 volts uh, and we have two resistors. We know that for Assuming these are identical resistors, we know that in a parallel circuit, uh, voltage is carried, is not split, so it's equal. So the voltage here is 24 volts, then the voltage here and here is also 24 volts. In the second example here, 24 volts uh, of charge total in the circuit because that's what the battery is. Um, we know that every path that the electrons can follow is going to have the same potential difference. So just like up here, uh, when we followed 
this path. There's one path, right? 24 volts across that path because it only crosses one resistor. We know that that resistor is 24 volts. If we look at then this path, the green one, that's a complete path, only passes through the one resistor, so we know that it's uh, 24 volts. However, when we look down here at this one, we have a yellow path, and this yellow path crosses two resistors. Assuming that they're the same resistors, and we'll get into that with Ohm's law, but assuming they're the same resistors, um, you're going to have to add the divide by 2, so each are going to be 12. Each of these will have 12. Um, regardless of what resistor is in there, you're going to know that V1 plus V3 is always going to equal 24. Um, so depending on the resistor, it could be uh, 6 and 18. It could be 23 and 1. Uh, there's a, a wide range, uh, an infinite range of uh, possibilities, but they always have to add up to 24. Um, same idea here, we follow this path, and we see it crosses one resistor, two resistors again. V3 and V2 are always going to add up to 24, um, regardless of what the individual numbers are. Assuming that they are the exact same resistor, it's going to be 12 and 12. All right, now Kirchhoff's law for current um, is a little different. Current, we know, splits at every juncture, whereas the voltage, the potential difference, does not change um, in a parallel circuit. It's um, per complete possible route that the electrons can take. In current, the electrons do split. Some of them are going to go this way, some of them are going to go this way. So right now we have 12 amps of current flowing um, at this point in, in our circuit. When it gets to the juncture right here, some of them, some of the current, or some of the electrons are going to go this way, and some of them are going to go this way. How many go each way depends again on the resistor. But assuming that these are the same resistors, it's going to be half. So assuming that, that these resistors are identical, then this is going to be 6 amps. And this is going to be 6 amps. Of current. When they join back up down here, the 6 amps going this way and the 6 amps going this way are going to join up and we're going to find that we have 12 amps again because these electrons may join up with these electrons and we get a current of 12 amps again. Same thing here. Now we've got 12 amps uh, to start with. Here at, uh, let's use some color. We'll say at the yellow junction and the green junction. Okay. At the yellow junction, the current is going to split. And some electrons that flow into it are going to go down, and some are going to go across. Now again, assuming each resistor is identical, then the current is going to be shared among all three possible paths that the current can take. So that means that three amps are going to be going through each one of these resistors. 
So if you were to put your amp meter right here, you're going to get 12 amps. If you put it right here, you're going to get 3 amps. If you put it right here, well, you had 12 going in. Oh dear, my math is wrong. Sorry. This should be a 4, 4, and 4. So if you put your ammeter here, you're going to get 4 amps. If you put your ammeter here, you started with 12. Four of them branched off down here. So you're left with 8 right here. Then, again, it splits off. 4 goes down, and 4 goes this way. So we've got 4 coming in each here. This go around here. We've got 4 here and 4 here. They join up at this spot here, and they get to the 8 here. And then they join up with the 4 amps here, and we get 12 again here. Again, this is all assuming that each resistor is identical, and we get into how that can differ with different resistors in Ohm's law. Okay, with Ohm's law, we have uh, um, the resistance of the resistor in ohms is equal to the potential difference across it divided by the current flowing through it. So in this simple circuit here, we have 12 amps of current and 12 volts, 1 ohm, right? Because 12 volts divided by 12 amps equals 1 ohm. If we increase our voltage of our battery, put in a 24 volt battery, still with a 1 ohm resistor, we're going to have 24 amps of current. Because more energy is going, or more electrons are going to be flowing, because there's a greater potential difference between across the circuit. Again, if we go to 36 volts, we get 36 amps. However, that's with a one ohm, because the um, with a one ohm resistor, they're always going to be equal. However, that's not the case with a two ohm, right? Because remember, it's the resistance or the ohms is equal to the voltage divided by the current, the potential difference divided by the current. So we have 2 ohms as our resistance. A 12 volt battery is only going to have 6 amps of current. Because in order to, if we have 2 here and 12 here, we have to have 6 here. 12 divided by 6 equals 2. If we increase to a 24 volt battery, we're going to get 12 amps. 36 volt battery, 18 amps. So as you increase the resistance, you're going to decrease the current. That makes sense, right? Because resistance is, it's the resistance of electrons to pass through it. You increase that resistance, you let less electrons through at a time, which reduces the current. Now let's look at if we, if we keep the voltage the same and we change the resistance. Okay, 12 volts, 2 ohms, 6 amps. We know that from here. However, if we increase it to 3 ohms, we put in a new resistor that has a resistance of 3 ohms, only 4 amps of current are going to be able to pass through. So 4 coulombs per second. If we increase it to 4 ohms, we only get 3 amps, or 3 coulombs per second of electrons are allowed to pass through. This is a very important um, relationship here um, that you're, you're going to need to be able to manipulate and you need to understand that in a simple circuit like this, voltage and current are not always going to be the same. They're only going to be the same if your resistance is 1 ohm. As you increase resistance, you're going to decrease the current. The greater the resistance, the greater the difference between voltage and current. All right, let's look at equivalent resistance now. Um, and this is going to bring in 
the ideas that we've used so far from Kirchhoff's Law and Ohm's Law. All right, in this circuit, we have a 24 volt battery. We have four resistors, two of them being parallel. In equivalent resistance, if we had, let's say, I'm just going to make a little box here. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll grab a very thick white pen. Maybe that won't work. <laughs> um, there. Okay. If we get rid of this and we look at this simple circuit, okay, what's the equivalent resistance of that circuit? The equivalent resistance of that circuit is simply. Um, the addition of each of the resistors. So 3 ohms plus 4 ohms plus 5 ohms, that's uh, um, 3 and 4 is 7 and 5 is 12. So the equivalent resistance of the whole circuit is 12 ohms. However, if we go back to what we had here, where we have a parallel circuit, equivalent resistance of resistors in parallel you don't add them up, you add one over them up. So in this case, we have one over R equivalent, and that's the equivalent of these two, of R2 and R3, equals one over R2 plus one over R3 equals 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 equals 1 over 2 1 over what r equivalent 1 over r equivalent equals 1 over 2 then r equivalent equals 2 so we can assume that this section here just has a resistance of 2 ohms. And then we can just treat it like a series. And we can add them up. 3 ohms plus 2 ohms is 5 ohms plus another 5 ohms is 10 ohms. So our R total is equal to 10 ohms. Now that we know the equivalent resistance of the whole circuit and we know the voltage we can calculate what the total current is for the whole circuit because we know that from Ohm's law resistance equals voltage over current which means that rearranging that we would get current equals voltage over resistance. So I total equals V total over R total equals 24 volts over 10 ohms equals 2.4 amps. That's this one. 2.4 amps. There, 2.4 amps. Now, 
now that we know that, we know that the total current for the circuit is 2.4 amps. We know that all of those 2.4 amps are leaving the battery here, and that means they're flowing through all 2.4 amps are throwing, flowing through this resistor. So we know that R1 is also going to be 2.4. It's going to split at the junction here, but then it's going to recombine down here, and we're going to have 2.4 amps again on R4. Now we need to calculate what the current is for I2 and I3. So how much goes this way on the circuit and how much goes this way on the circuit? Because we know that these are identical resistors, we know that it splits evenly. So it's going to be 1.2 going this way and 1.2 going this way. Now we can calculate the voltage because we know the resistance and we know the current. We can look at Ohm's law and we see that vo voltage, reworking this equation, is equal to resistance times current. So resistance is th of R1 is 3 ohms. Current is 2.4. 3 times 2.4. Grab a calculator. 3 times 2.4, 7.2 volts. So we have uh, V1 is 7.2 volts. V2, uh, 4 ohms times 1.2 amps. 4.8 volts. And of course, the same is going to be for V3. And now V4, 5 ohms times 2.4 amps is 12. Yep, 12 volts. And that makes sense because we know that for this path the resistance drop across the three resistors should equal 24 volts. So that's uh, V1 plus V2 plus V4 7.2 plus 4.8 plus 12 does equal 24. And same thing for this path. Uh, 7.2 plus 4.8 plus 12 equals 24. So there you have your numbers. Now, it gets a little more confusing, though, when you have the same sort of setup, except that your resistors are not identical. So we start off the same. We need to find our equivalent resistance. Um, we can say that, well... It's 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12 equals, uh, that would be 3 over 12, which would be 1 over 4. So the equivalent resistance here is 4 ohms. Hopefully you followed that. Equivalent resistance equals 1 over the first resistor plus 1 over the second resistor. Um, 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12 is 3 twelfths. Uh, 3 twelfths is equal to 1 quarter. Therefore, the equivalent resistance, 1 over the equivalent resistance is 1 over 4. Equivalent resistance is 4 ohms. So we start off that way the same. Uh, we find our total current the same way uh, that we did in the last question. Our total current is equal to... Um, now let me just make sure that we get this right. Current is voltage divided by resistance. Uh, 
right? We have R equals V over I, therefore I equals V over R, yes. Okay, so our, our current I equals V over R. Now this is current total, current volt or total voltage, and total resistance. Total voltage we know is 24. Total resistance, well, um, we treat this parallel circuit as a 4 ohm series with these two. And 3 plus 4 is 7, plus 5 is 12. We get 12 ohms, 24 volts, equals... Um, 2 amps. So our, our total, we said, was 12. Our I total is 2. So now we need to start calculating some others. Well, we can calculate uh, these two pretty quickly and easily, R1 and R4, uh, those resistors uh, for the current. Um, because we know that the current um, doesn't split until here and rejoins here, so we know whatever the total current is is equal to the current that passes through each of these resistors. So this is this is going to be 2, and this is going to be 2. Um, we can then calculate the voltage of those quite quickly. Um, resistance 1, uh, or sorry, resistor 1, Voltage, as we saw in our previous example, um, voltage is equal to resistance times current. So resistance of 3 ohms times a current of 2 amps. It's an easy one to calculate, 6. Six volts here. Uh, here we have 5 ohms times 2 amps. We've got 10 volts here. And now we need to calculate the others. Well, before we can calculate the amount of current that goes this way and the amount of current that goes this way from this juncture point, um, the way we can do that is we can calculate that current using the resistance of each resistor and the voltage going through it. Because we know that the voltage here and the voltage here, and we know that voltage is the same in a parallel circuit, we know that the V2 and V3 are going to be identical. Knowing that the total has to equal 24, and if this is 10 and this is 6, that's 16. The difference, 24 minus 16, is 8. We know that the voltage going through these two is each going to be 8. So we've got 6 volts, 8 volts, 8 volts, and 10 volts. Now, knowing that, and knowing the resistance, we can calculate the current going through them. The resistance for R2 is 6 ohms. The voltage is 8 volts. Again, going back to Ohm's law, we want to know the current. Sorry. We want to know current. Current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. Um, so for this one, 
8 volts divided by 6 ohms, 8 divided by 6, one point three three and eight divided by twelve, of course can be half that point six six. And from there, we can double check our work um, because we know that the amount of current that branches off here plus the amount of current that branches off here has to equal the total current of the circuit. 1.33 plus 0 0.66 does equal to the total current. And there you have it. There's your equivalent resistance calculations. All right, and the last topic uh, to discuss is electrical power. Uh, electrical power is a measure of the amount of energy used by an appliance divided by the time. On page 660 and 661 in your textbook, it goes through derivations of how to get these other equations for power. But they all stem from this energy over time equation. Uh, power is also equal to the voltage times the current. It's equal to the current squared divided by the resistance. Or sorry, current squared times the resistance. It's uh, also equal to the voltage squared divided by the resistance. So knowing those four equations is very important. Um, we'll look at three problems uh, regarding electrical power. The first one, what is the power drawn from a 100-watt bulb operating at a in a 120 volt circuit. Um, sorry, that should say what is the current drawn. Not the power. What is the current drawn from a 100 watt bulb operating in a 120 volt circuit? Well, if we look at this equation, what, what do we know? We know the power we know the voltage, we want to know the current, so we're going to look at this equation here. We're going to have to rearrange it, and we will get I equals P divided by V equals 100 watts divided by 120 volts equals zero decimal eight three amps. Ooh. Sorry about that. Not sure what happened there. All right, uh, so we'll, again, 0 0.833 amps. Another question, um, what is the resistance of a 900 watt toaster that draws 5 amps of current? Well, we know the power, we know the current, we want to know the resistance. So we're going to use this equation. Rearranging it, get R equals P divided by I squared equals 900 watts divided by 5 amps squared equals 900 watts divided by sorry, 25 amps squared
36 equals 36 ohms. One last question. Uh, what is the power in the circuit below? Um, okay, well, we know the resistance of the circuit and we know the voltage of the circuit. So we want to know the power. We want to use this equation. P equals B squared over R equals 12 volts squared divided by 4 ohms equals 144 volts squared divided by 4 ohms Thirty-six watts. Now, just a, a side note: if this were a parallel circuit with, say, a or an eight ohm resistor in there as well. Um, to calculate this, the resistance you would use is the equivalent resistance of these, which would be 1 over R equivalent equals 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 equals 1 or equals uh, oops, 3 over 8. Uh, so to calculate this answer, we would go eight of eight thirds R equivalent is equal to eight divided by three two point six six or two point six seven ohms. And that's the number that you would then plug in